Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I am Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It's day 602 of our three-year journey through the Word of God. We've come to 2 Chronicles 26 and the long reign of King Uzziah, one of the longest reigns of any king in Scripture. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we look at this important king together today. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. It is true. It is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. And we need you to apply its truths deeply to our hearts that we might grow in our love for Jesus, our Savior. We might walk more closely with him. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 26 tells us that all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his fathers. Uzziah was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jechaliah of Jerusalem, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done. He set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. He went out and made war with the Philistines and broke through the wall of Gath and the wall of Jab Jabna and the wall of Ashdod. And he built cities in the territory of Ashdod and elsewhere among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines and, among, and against the Arabians who lived in Gerbal and against the, Munu the Munites. The Ammonites paid tribute to Uzziah, and his fame spread even to the border of Egypt, for he became very strong. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the angle, and fortified them. He built two towers in the wilderness, and cut out many cisterns, for he had large herds, both in the Shephelah and in the plain. And he had farmers and vine dressers in the hills and in the fertile lands, for he loved the soil. Moreover, Uzziah had an army of soldiers fit for war in divisions according to the numbers and the muster made by Jeiel, the secretary, and Maaseah, the officer, under the direction of Hananiah, one of the king's commanders. The whole number of the heads of fathers' houses of mighty men of valor was 2,600. Under their command was an army of 307,500 who could make war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. And Uzziah prepared for all the army shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, and stones for slinging. In Jerusalem he made machines, invented by skillful men to be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows and great stones, and his fame spread far for he was miraculously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, he grew proud to his destruction. For he was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. But Azariah the priest went in after him with 80 priests of the Lord who were men of valor. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for you have done wrong, and it will bring you no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was angry. Now he had a censer in his hand to burn incense, and when he became angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead in the presence of the priests of the house of the Lord by the altar of incense. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked at him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they rushed him out quickly, and he himself hurried to go out, because the Lord had struck him. And King Uzziah was a leper to the day of his death. And being a leper lived in a separate house, for he was excluded from the house of the Lord. And Jotham, his son, was over the king's household, governing the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah from first to last, Isaiah the prophet son of Amos wrote. And Uzziah slept with his fathers, 
And they buried him with his fathers in the burial field that belonged to the kings, for they said, He is a leper. And Jotham his son reigned in his place. Isaiah the prophet, you know, in Isaiah 6, when he has his great vision of the Lord, that, that is a vision that Isaiah saw in the year that King Uzziah died. Uh, I think he was already functioning as a, as a member of a priestly family, perhaps as a court advisor and prophet, but this dramatic call of God came in the year that King Uzziah died. And so it's interesting that Isaiah the prophet is the one who wrote the definitive account of the life of Uzziah, which has been lost, sadly, to history. It wasn't scripture, but I'm sure it was a great biography and something that I wouldn't mind reading if someone unearthed a copy of it. But in God's providence, we don't have it with us. So, and that's good. Because God's providence is always good. Ah, King Uzziah. Are you catching on to the foreshadowing, heavy-handed foreshadowing of the chronicler here? When he says um, things like verse 5, he set himself to seek God in the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of the Lord. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. You're probably at the point now where as soon as you heard that, you thought, oh, wait a minute. There's going to come a time when he doesn't seek the Lord and he's not going to prosper. There's coming something bad, right? And, and this is the kind of thing that the chronicler will put into his accounts. King Uzziah is a long-reigning, faithful king, 52-year reign, taking the throne when he's 16 and reigning um, until he's 68 years old when he dies. So a pretty long, pretty successful reign. Um, he accomplished much because he sought the Lord, because he sought to do things according to the word of the Lord and according to wisdom from God. Uh, he sought the Lord, God prospered him, and he had great success. He had military success. He had political success. Uh, he had personal success. And this was clear and evident. The enemies of God's people, whether they were the Philistines or, or others, were beat back. And Judah, again, established itself as the dominant power in that part of the world, all the way down to the border of Egypt. He builds towers and he has cisterns and he has large herds. So there's an economic prosperity as well as a military security under his reign. He organizes the men into these fighting units. Um, you know, there's a large army, a large skilled army. But also the first time we see something new in verse 15, and that is these defensive machinery. So one of the things that any walled city, especially a capital city, had to be on the guard against was siege or armies that might come up and make war against the city. We've already seen that happen a couple of times in Jerusalem's history. And so Uzziah has skillful men invent these large machines for shooting arrows and, and launching great stones. So um, these you know, large, um, oversized uh, crossbows, basically, that, that shoot arrows down. And then whether it's a catapult or something like that that shoots stones down, it helps to keep an invading, besieging army at bay, and particularly if they're building siege works, because they have to build siege towers and battering rams. And as they're building the siege towers and battering rams, if you can launch stones, and knock those things down or blow those things apart um, with that type of machinery, then you can keep them from approaching the wall. So there's a great deal of wisdom. But what happens? What happens when people are successful, when they have military security, when they have economic prosperity, when they have inventiveness, right? They've got new things that they never had before. Things are built up. Things are looking great. What happens? Well, 99 and a half times out of 100, when it comes to people, being people, they grow proud. Proud. Uh, Uzziah is proud of his accomplishments. He's proud of what he has been able to do. And although he began by seeking the Lord, and in seeking the Lord, he was prosperous, over time, his prosperity continued under the blessing of God, and he began to think that he was the one responsible for this. And in his pride... 
He enters the temple of the Lord thinking, I'm the man. I should be able to do what all the kings do in the uh, surrounding areas. And that is the kings lead the worship. The kings lead the sacrifices to the gods. The kings represent the people before their gods. Uh, there were priests, of course, in other ancient civilizations as well. But kings, when they became very powerful, they would take this power away from the priests and take it to themselves so that they were the first and foremost, not only in the economy and in military and defense and strategy, but also in worship. But the law of God, given through Moses, set up a strict separation of powers. The king had his role, the priest had his role, and while a king could also be a prophet and a priest could also be a prophet, it was absolutely forbidden under God's law for a king to be a priest or for a priest to be a king, because that's taking two ruling offices of authority, authority over the state, the military, the economy, and authority over the church, the worship of God, the sacrifices, and you're taking these the head of these two different, separately established, and yet both under God institutions, and you're putting them in one person's hand. And that's a recipe for tyranny, and God absolutely forbids that. And so when Uzziah tries to take that to himself, he is opposed. He is opposed by 80 priests, men of valor. They are not pushovers. Although King Uzziah is a mighty king, he commands an army of hundreds of thousands of people. These 80 men know that they are called by God. They are ordained by God. They are consecrated by God to serve in the temple. And so they say, it is not for you, King Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests who are consecrated to burn incense. So get out. And Uzziah gets angry. How dare anybody tell him what to do? He's the king. And that leads to leprosy breaking out on him. And he's left as a leper for the rest of his days. Pride. Pride. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. We need to humble ourselves and depend upon the Lord. We need to seek the Lord. We need to be humble before the Lord. And when pride comes up, God loves us enough that he will give us things that weaken us, things that challenge us, things that undermine our self-sufficiency because it's an illusion anyway. We have a great example of this with the Apostle Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians when he has this wonderful vision where he's caught up to the third heaven and he has this great vision of the throne room of God, of heaven, the, the dwelling place of God. And so, but what happens immediately after that in verse 7, Paul writes, So to keep me from becoming conceited, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Uzziah's problem was that he wanted to be what only Jesus is, and that is priest and king over the people of God. He didn't think he needed the Lord. He thought he could take upon himself the prerogatives of the Lord. In pride, he was puffed up. And so in humility, he was humbled and shamed so that he might be built up in faith. We need to make sure that when God is doing great things in us and through us, when we are being blessed by the hand of the Lord, we remember that King Jesus is the only one worthy of all praise and honor, and he's the one who is protecting us and blessing us, and to him belongs all glory and honor and kingdom and power forever and ever. Let's pray. Father, thank you for King Jesus, who is King of kings and Lord of lords and our great high priest. Thank you that he is the glorious one, the only one who's head over your kingdom, the only one who reigns with absolute supreme authority. Father, would you reign in our hearts by your Holy Spirit to bring us humility and faith and faithfulness? 
under your grace and for your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for 2 Chronicles 26. I think Mike is back tomorrow, and uh, he will carry us on forward into 2 Chronicles 27. Have a blessed day in the Lord.